In this presentation, we're going to look at roll your own or build your own versus AWS supplied services. First of all, why would you ever want to do this? The fact is that AWS services, although cheap and easy to provision, often come with limitations. For example, SQS has very strict limitations, such as no dead letter queue. RDS has a three terabyte limit. Users can also easily install their own services on top of EC2. You could build your own load balancer, queue, database, email server, and so on. The user installed services will give you more control in exchange for a higher cost. The EC2 instance cost to run the service will typically be between 4 to 15 times more expensive than the service provided by AWS. You'll also have to take care of management yourself. Taking care of things like HA and DR are often complicated, but the user can do that themselves if they choose. First of all, let's look at a roll your own load balancer and the steps involved. The first thing you do is obviously spin up an EC2 instance. Next thing is choose some sort of software to provide the load balancing function. HA proxy or Nginx are common popular options. Next thing you do is configure the software to run inside of the EC2, and you repoint your DNS to that server. Then you have to manually add web servers behind the instance. Consider that when you do this, your running costs are going to be about 5 to 10 times more expensive than an ELB. The EC2 cost to provide the same functionality is going to cost about that much. You have to maintain and upgrade your HA proxy or Nginx installation. You have to rotate your web server IPs so that when a server goes down, you can spin up another one behind it. And you have to take into account the fact that the HA proxy is now a single point of failure. It doesn't matter how many instances you have behind that load balancer. If you lose the load balancer, you lose your application. If you look at an AWS provided load balancer provided through the ELB function, you get provisioning in seconds or minutes. You can spin these things up very easily and very simply. AWS performs all the administration, taking care of the HA in the back end so that it doesn't fail on you. And it has native integration to auto scaling so that when you lose a server behind the ELB, another server spins up automatically. It's also redundant and fault tolerant so that if they lose the underlying hardware that an ELB machine is on, they spin up other machines behind it. What they actually do in the ELB function is have several ELBs running at any given time, so that if you lose a single one, you don't lose your whole low balance function. If you look at other roll your own versus AWS supplied services, the things to become familiar with are obviously the service limitations. Make sure that you can play inside of those service limitations, and only when you can't would you want to spin up a service yourself. If you're using roll your own, make sure to account for all these things such as HA or high availability, avoiding that single point of failure, making sure you have elasticity and scaling on demand, taking care of things like rolling out servers behind your ELB if one fails, make sure that you're taking care of DR or disaster recovery, doing backups and so forth. Many of the services that Amazon provides can be rolled out in a roll your own. For example, ElastiCache, you could build your own memcache. With DynamoDB, you could install your own Cassandra cluster. With SQS, SNS, or SES, you can build these services yourself. Again, Amazon provides services that provide all these functions. If you can play inside of the limitations that they give you, it is almost always better to use the Amazon service. This has been Roll Your Own versus AWS Service Presentation.